Welcome to Whip Finish Wednesday. If you're on YouTube, feel free to fast forward to the uh, um, tying part if you so please. We've got a couple of things we want to do before we start tying. Number one, we're going to do, uh, Katie's going to do a drawing. There was over a hundred comments on the Fomanizer video. Um, so it took me a while to write everyone's name down and get it into a cup. So she's going to do a drawing for the $25 gift card to Jay Stockard. And uh, then she's going to show, uh, she also was uploading a lot of pictures or emailed to us. And uh, hey, Shelby, you're on Instagram. Good to see you. And Dusty Boy, and I can't read the other one on Instagram. Um, if you guys can, hop over on YouTube. You'll be able to see and hear us better and see more than just my mouth. Um, Joe, I'm glad you got the, the, the skin. I'm glad it arrived to you. Um, that's awesome. Gary, what's up? Uh, then, so then, show, then Katie's going to show uh, some of the pictures of the Frenchies that were sent to us, and then we're going to get to tying. Uh, what's up, John? So the reason we're doing spinners tonight is Katie and I are, have got a trip. I've got a work meeting in Denver in a couple months, and we're going to go up. and She has planned out quite the adventure. We're going to I, not Idaho Falls, um, Salt Lake City. We're going to pick up an RV, and it's been a couple of weeks. We're going to go and pick up Gary, um, and then we're going to uh, we're going to fish with Gary for a little bit. Then we're going to go over to Yellowstone and fish with Craig Matthews. And Craig gave us a list of flies that we need to tie, and I've got a, a confession to make. I have never fished a spinner like I'm getting ready to, um, to tie. But he said that these are this is a good pattern to have over in the Yellowstone area in June. So that is what we're going to be tying tonight because since I don't typically what you'll see me tie on here is what uh, what I'm fishing. So um, there's no tricks up our sleeve. That's just it's pretty easy for me to decide what to tie because it's whatever I need to put in my box. But um, yeah, I'm a rebel. Um, so we're really looking forward to it. So that's that's why we're tying the spinner based on Craig Matthews' advice. So with that said, Katie, do you want to do a drawing? Sure. All righty. Let's see that thing. So we're going to do a drawing for a gift certificate for Jay Stocker tonight. And this is for those of you guys who commented on the um, Jay Stocker Feminizer video that we posted right here on YouTube. So if you haven't seen that yet, check it out. It's pretty cool. And go to Jay Stocker dot com to check out the Feminizer products. Dot com. So let's see who our winner is. I've got my English coffee cup here. And Misha. Pull up a handful of those. It took me forever to get those All things. Right. She thinks it's something to eat. Treat. Treat. John. I can't read John's handwriting. Gray guy. Hold it up. I can't see it. John Gray, I think. John Gray? That looks right to me. John Gray, yay, congratulations. You're the winner of the gift card this week from Jay Stockard. So let us know your contact info so that we can get Jay Stockard to send you a gift certificate. And Katie will post uh, the, our email address is demuthflyfishing at gmail.com and she'll put it up, she'll pin the comment. So uh, you can uh, send us an email and we will send you that gift, that gift certificate um, and we'll get that get out to you so congratulations what was his name again i think he put john gray john gray it, it looked like gray or guy what can i say so, I, I might be able to tie it somewhat decent fly but that's debatable but i definitely cannot write very well especially when i'm in a rush so if she's typing that out um are you ready to do, show some pictures sure hey we'll just double up and get get sure katie on here twice pictures. real quick so um, we had a whole bunch of pictures this week to show. So I'm really excited to share these with you guys. And some of you guys even emailed to them to our new flash, new fly fishing at gmail.com. So I made sure to check that and get these on here as well. Let's go ahead and start with Ken B from the land down under and his lovely row of Frenchies here, ready to go fly fishing all in a perfect straight line here in 
The tackle box. So can be looking good. And I can't remember. I think it was Trout Deceiver just said hello from down under. So that's two okay. Australians. And I'm sorry, Trout Deceiver. I, I did not say hello to you back. And and Joe, no, you did not get that because you live on Long Island. But and that's the name of the where Dom Dar Park is, honey. Long Island. That's the name of that. I was trying to remember the name of uh here in Kingsport. There's a uh, bunch of baseball fields and um yeah it's called long it was an old indian uh, native american area and it's called long island before it came down to our fields well let's get back to the pictures <laughs> um we also have okay so another emailed submission matt dillix sent to this was his first i love the and this is the second one that he sent us. And it looks like I have the pictures kind of like flipped sideways, but some Frenchies from Matt. Um, and then we have Mr. Electric Tire with a couple of Frenchies head to head. Sure, sulfur Frenchies. Those look pretty sweet. And we have Zero Ryan 999. Oh, the Frenchie standing on its head. A lovely tie. Oh, 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 Ryan. Pretty picture. It looks really nice on that. Jimmy. Jimmy Rope. With his rename background. Love it. And we have Freddie. Um, and I'm these colors here. The tail, the collar, the rib stands out. Um, we've got Ed, Server Dad. And it looks like, I want to call that like shrimp pink, but it looks more like a hot pink. I love the pink color. Fly time. Sitting on the vice here. I think that is Joe, I believe, who's on here. J Wilson 14360 with a plethora of fringies. Old oh, Jim. Oh, some of those have got the drop beads on. I'm just now seeing that now it's on the big screen. Christine, her duo of fringies. We have Mike Ragsdale. And design on that one. Uh, Smith, classic like, Frenchie. Now, Patrick used a few different materials on his. I believe that one is the micro glint, but he used pheasant tail as well as some um, camo thread as well on one of his. D Bishop standing on its head with a nice looking tail. Love those headstands. Uh, Server Dad, another one, and you can just see the, the hook pointing through the eye of the other one. And I think that's all I got. So thanks, guys, for sending those in. I love looking at them and sharing them. So keep sending in your pics. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Katie, for putting all those together. That can be kind of a kind of a chore, but I'm, I'm, it's fun sharing all your old work because um, it's just seeing the new color combinations and the different uh, different designs. It's like they did kind their homework. Yeah, it's kind of it gets the creativity but going. I'm, I'm putting their pictures up on the fridge. That's right. So proud. Like, oh, look what they did. So proud. That's right. And Ken, thank you for saying hello to your fellow Australian buddy. That is pretty cool. Every single their word. Every single their word. Um, okay. So quick materials list for what we're tying tonight. This the the rusty spinner. Um, Craig Matthews also told us to tie some PMDs and some light olive spinners. So we, we just switched the colors up a bit. But I'm going to use the A-Rex Freshwater 503, which is their dry fly light uh, hook. But any dry fly hook will work fine. I'm going to use a size 16 and 18. So these are smaller flies. Um, you can tie them. I was talking with John Collins earlier this evening, and um, he he only tied twenty four dozen, um, and, it, and I think he that tied them up to size twelve or so. Yeah. So it really, I mean, it's gotta be better than that. I'm just, um, I'm teasing. <laughs> and hook and hackle flash up sound. Can I think everyone else can hear? Can you? Are you having a problem? Having problems uh, hearing? Uh, a while ago, we I had the mics turned off, but I think we got it straightened out. Okay. Um, so dry fly hook, we're going to use for tailing. I'm using the the micro fabets or micro mayfly tails. It's basically a paintbrush, uh, the paintbrush bristles. Um, and these are medium done or done. 
Um, but I really don't think when you get them on there, it's making that big a deal. Um, so that's going to be our, our tail body is going to be, I've got some of these from Moonlit Fly Fishing, these Magpie Wild Turkey Biots. I've got one in Rusty Spinner. I've got one in PMD. You're on the side camera now. And, oh, thank you, ma'am. So I've got one in Rusty Spinner, one in PM and Pale Morning Done. And um, I didn't have a light olive in that color, so I've got some Nature Spirit, Turkey Bell Quills, and Pale Olive. So those are the three colors we're going to use for our body. Um, because... I did my homework. Um, I've got some of this um, Zelon dubbing and the crinkled uh, Zelon, which is the what I'm going to use the, the wing and the shuck. I uh, will use the uh, the medium done or the light done. This is from Blue Ribbon Flies, um, and the dubbing I'm going to use that. But I'm also going to use, and I haven't decided which one I like better for this application on the size 18s i definitely am a fan of the, the kapok um just because it doesn't take much but getting a nice thin body and if we get really crazy i might just do one with just the, the whole body and everything the kapok because it, you can get really fine um really smooth bodies with this and it works it works great but um i'll use the um the rusty or, or um Shoot, yeah, the, the I've got a rust color in one of these. Which one is it? Can't find it now. I had rust. I'll we'll start panicking now. Here we go. This is what I was looking for. So the olive and rust. Those are the two colors I'm going to be using. And um, I think that's it. Not much to it. Crinkle dummy. There's more stuff. Okay, so it's only this way. And okay, so substitution. This is, uh, I, I've been tying for, uh, you know, a few days and I've gotten along just fine with the Zelon. Um, the separate fly pair, uh, um, poly yarn will work. It's just not quite as sparkly. Um, if you have pair post material, that's fine. Uh, really anything you'd use for a parachute would be, would be fine. You just want to make sure it's, it's a, a buoyant material, something that's not going to absorb water. Um, because this is going to be the, the wing that's going to help it right up front. So right on top. So here's an example here in the vise. Um, Katie, if you'll switch. There you go. Perfect. So this is a size 18 rusty spinner in the vise. You can see you've got the, the <clears throat> two tails, the biop body. The, that's a Superfly Kapok on this one. And um, the Zelon, how crinkly it is and everything. Um, but yes, you don't, don't get to... Uh, which is great. Um, full feathers, way to go. There's a lot more buyouts on your for your buck. Yep, I agree. Oh, and Steve is absolutely correct. I, I think EP fibers would be a phenomenal substitution. The EP trigger point fibers, really a good substitution. Regular EP fibers would be fine, but the EP trigger point fibers would be money. Absolutely. Um, so. I just figured since Craig Matthews used to own blue ribbon flies, I figured I'd give them a call and order that, that stuff directly from them. And we're going to do the tails a couple of different ways. Because uh, we've shown you, I think it was on one of Juan Ramirez's uh, flies uh, a few months ago. We split the tails, and that's exactly what we're going to do, split tails, but show a few different methods of doing it. Katie, am I forgetting anything? No. Mm. Hey, Truman. I mean, yeah, I guess it's okay, Patrick, if you're late. I guess. We'll let you keep out at this this time. All right. So we got the, got our, this is a big one. So size 16 to start us off. It's funny. I'll put it in straight the way I'm looking at it. And I look up at the camera and it looks crooked in the camera. And I'm like, well, do I want it straight or do I want the camera straight? I can't decide. And if I was really good, I would have threaded my bobbin before I uh, went live. But, you know, we just, it just keeps us frosty to do it all, do it live. So I'm, I purposely unthread all my bobbins just to give you all something to kind of laugh at. And this, like everything else, if I wasn't live, I'd have it threaded twice by now, but... All right, <clears throat> so we're good to go. All right.
great. So that's 16, Truman, Barry, you're so open to busy summer weekends on fish. That's right. All right, so we're going to start this. This is the Superfly 12 on uh, Classic Wax to Red and Rust. As you can see right there, Rust. Boom. Okay. And we'll start right behind. I'm going to leave a little bit of space here behind the hook eye. I got a little bit of fray there. It's okay. Yeah, I don't like that, especially on that camera. Picks up too much of the... You know you see it. Of my mess up. It's pretty bad while I'm messing up threading the hook. This is going to be a fun night. Mm -hmm. Love to start. For sure. That Tim Robbins. You're not talking about me, I don't think, are you? I like Tim Robbins, but... Okay. So... When we're starting the, the thread, one of the mistakes that I've, I've made in the past is wrapping too far back. So I want to get a nice, um, my, doggone it, my light's not in the right spot. There we go. So I want to get a nice um, set of tails that go straight out, if not just a little bit canned up, but I don't want them to go down. If I wrap my thread all the way to the back right here, then my next wrap, unless I do it on top of the thread, is going to be going down just a little bit. So make sure that there's just a little bit of bare uh, hook shank here that is not this before the bend. One of the tools for the spinners, but we'll try some royal wolves to keep my hands busy. Oh, happy birthday to your well, dad, Truman. Josh, we would love to see your royal wolves for sure. Um, and so tail material substitution is caught de Leon, um, you know, he's any sort of like, um, God, oh, what's it called? Any sort of tailing is fine. I think Craig said he uses rooster tailing. So. Thank you, Joe. <laughs> Not too big a deal. So this is probably the hardest part about the, uh, about the tying this fly for me anyway. And that's, getting four fibers out of here and getting them getting them lined up. So, because they're lined up kind of, but they're just not, not perfect. And this is probably one of the things that you don't need to do. The fish probably aren't going to care, but I like them to be somewhat lined up. And I know these aren't perfect, but that'll work. So I've got my tail here. <clears throat> now this is four fibers. I think this might have been a John Collins suggestion using four. Um, so I want, I want the, my tail to be the entire length of the hook. So from eye to bend. So I just measure that, take that measurement there. You can see the tip goes right to the bend and I just put it right here. I'm going to catch it, make sure it's on top of the hook shank, rock it back. And if you get this part done and uh, you see that those tails aren't perfectly lined up, but that'll be okay for now. Um, see so when I rock that back. That's now on their hook shank. If those were going down any more than that, that means I started too far back. So I'm gonna put just a handful of wraps. We'll go four, three, three wraps. So they're kind of tied in, okay? Actually, I'm gonna take one wrap and go underneath these tails like this. That's gonna kind of prop them up just a little bit. Now I'm gonna take those three wraps. So is everyone kind of, Tracking with me so far? Yeah, John Collins said that you can stack them if you need to. Oh, yeah, that probably probably work a little bit. So this time, what I want to do is I want to take my fingernail. I'll stack the next ones, John, just for you. Um, and then what I'm trying to do is I'm going to split this into two into two sections of of two. So I can't even see that one. That's way too short. Got it now, though. I'm going to take my thread. You can't see what I'm doing. So I'm going to take my thread and I'm going to go up in between the, the two sets. Like that. Am I in between them? Nope. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. No. You are between one and the other. Yep. Yeah. This one, that one. Okay. All right. So we've got the thread now in between. No. Nope. <laughs> Can't see it. And that one short one's really driving me nuts. All right. <clears throat> We're going to do it 
This is what you do. This is what you do. You get your four more out. I mean, even getting four at a time is, is kind of a pain. Oh, by the way, <clears throat> Frenchies work great when you go fishing, don't they, honey? Yeah, you should have shown. That's what you should have done. It's had your picture of your Frenchie. Okay, so these, these are a little bit, these are straight. So let's go back to the hook, please. All right, so I've measured out, pinch, do a pinch wrap, pull it down, make sure those are on top of the hook shank. Take them, bring them down, around. So we've got them propped up. Straighten it out, do two or three wraps, just working a thread forward, keeping that, that your butt ends lined up. And we're gonna take our finger now that they're all the same length and spread them apart so I can get two, two clumps. This is a lot easier to do than it is to show, but until you see how it's supposed to be, it won't make any sense. On the first one, they definitely could see where you were going with the thread. So just try to focus on turning it how you need to see it to get right. in between. Well, how I need to see it is this, unfortunately. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have the thread come up and in between those two sets of there you go. There you go. All right. So I've got my thread just coming down and up and through. I'm going to do one wrap over. And now you can hold the, this this um, set this close to you and then kind of let your thread loose and bring it down like this. So now I've got two wraps of thread. You're going to like the, the next way I'm going to show this because it's a lot easier to show anyway. Now I've got those uh, split apart, not angled the right way, but there we go. The key thing is when that when they get wet and they get chewed on and something comes, pinches them, brings them down like this, they're going to stay split. See, I'm just kind of messing with them. I mean, I'm pinching them pretty hard and they stay split. That's, that's, that's what we want to our end result to be. Why do they call them spinners? Because it's when the the mayfly is spent and it falls back down uh, to the um, to the surface and is basically falling there to die. A friend from Josh Hutchin, great guy. Two and a half hours. Okay. So yep, that's St Steve. I think this way, the way I just showed is is better for when you have multiple tails. Because doing it that way will split these bunches a little bit. But the way you're talking about is pretty darn easy. So here's kind of my joke of the day now. And you all know how much I love playing with uh, with super glue because I just don't ever do it. And, um, yep, John, this one was showed. That's the next one. So zap a gap, zap a gap, zap a gap. Two brand new... So what I did is I'm starting to find the right one. And this one, yeah, let's go to the go to the, the hook here. Okay. Please, ma'am. So I got my zappa gap here. This is an old old thing here. You see how like gooey and yucky it is? Can't use that. Um, but the nice thing is I can open and close the lid because I put you can use chapstick or whatever you want to. I'm just using the the one wonder wax. And if you'll just like gob wax all over your, your lid as you're when you first open it, then it, it'll it'll open and close no problem. But I've had this one open for about a month or two, and it finally um finally just gunked up on me. So it's not thin enough. So this one's going in the trash. So I got a brand new bottle and I opened it up, and this one was broken and completely sealed up and like I, here's the the package for it open it up the the um side here is broken complete waste of money well i think that you got that like and you here's the other one this this one it's about a year old I'm, I'm, but here's the other one and it's thicker than the the one i had treated before so anyway, this is a really long, boring story. Well, a long, boring story is when you buy. So I found some of the Gulf super glue and it works great. Then it's working fine. My point in that whole story is when you go to your fly shop and you buy um, 
Um, super glue. Take it off pack. If you're ready to use it, take it off package and check it out. Make sure it's not junk. Because literally this, that's like $3 or $4 a piece went in the trash can. And a lot of times they have an expiration date on them. So just look on the package. <laughs> and I've, I've had that Wonder Wash for a long time. What the, it's not that expensive. I do like the, they like the wax for just standard wax. But so I'm going to take my, my, my buyout here. I'm going to pull one off. And just so you can see what I'm going to do, because I'm going to do this on, on all of them. So I'm going to take my longer scissors and I'm going to trim. Just a little bit off the edge. It's not too big a deal on the size 16s, but the smaller ones it is. I'm going <clears> to, <throat> let's go back. Yep. So cross this over. Capture it in like that. Keeping the body somewhat smooth. You don't have to worry about a taper or anything. Um, and then I'm going to put a couple wraps just to move that forward. And then I take my, Joe, I hope that's you coming to my defense. All right, take my super glue. I want to put not a bunch down, but I want it to be just like that. I won't look wet. If I just put like a little teeny, teeny, teeny tiny amount on, then it will um, um just soak in. It won't adhere the um, the buyout to the body. And now I just kind of roll it up. It's right about there. I'm going to undo these wraps. One, two, pull tight, three. Cut that off close, but not so close you cut your thread off. And there we go. So now I've got a little body <clears throat> done. No problem at all. My first good. I've been wanting to try Teflon tape. Well, that's interesting. Is there still red? The, are you talking about the lights, Steve? Loctite at Home Depot. Now, I, I, I did get some, uh, uh, not Loctite, um, the gel. I think it's the gel Loctite for some uh, streamers. But anyway, so I've got my, um, my Zelon here. We'll cut off a little piece of it. And when I say a little piece, maybe five inches, six inches, enough to do a handful of flies. And um, John Collins shared a really cool trick that I haven't um, that I haven't tried yet. But he will cut the individual segments, and then with a lighter. Here, y'all can watch this live and see if because this material might just completely burn me up. I don't know. With lighter, just do this, singe it, and probably squeeze them together. And that'll keep the tips lined up and uh, kind of out of your way as you're tying a little bit better. And that's definitely, definitely one to do. Instagram handle. Um, so, anyway. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my, let's go back to the side here. Honey. I'm going to take my little clump here. So this is what I just cut off. And because this is a 16, if this was a 14 or 12, I'd probably use the whole piece, but um, it's, a, it's a little bit smaller. So I'm going to take that off. And of course, I just fuse it together. Just make it a little, little bit thinner. Not a whole lot, but just a little bit. And then because I'm, not Mr. Money Bags. I save those pieces and I'll add them into a, another one. So, <clears throat> so now I'm going to take this and just kind of drape it over over the flag. My, my thread is roughly sitting right where I want the um, the wing to go in. So I just kind of drape that over and put a wrap in. This make sure it's kind of positioned where I want it. Then turn that single wrap into an X wrap. I just hold everything up. Make sure it's in the right spot. Do a couple more X wraps. So roughly, this is what we're looking at right now. So you see, you kind of just made a bow tie. And there's a little 
string or a little piece of that zealand sticking in there. So pull it out. And now we're looking fine. So now all you have to do is just dub it and that's it. So I'm gonna grab the, the K-POC on this one. So we're going to hook on it. We use rust. And remember, this is the key to this fly is keeping it keeping it thin. Just apply it better on the fingers. Rex the chicken colors. Um Oh, you're, John's talking about using pliers to singe it. I could say I could say that probably would be a little bit. Uh, if you were doing twenty-four dozen of them, you probably would. I wouldn't have many fingers left over. If you did it the way I did it, of course. And then again, if you're doing it the way that I did it, doing twenty-four dozen, you'd be sitting here a couple of weeks. All right, so pull this up. Make sure it's kind of the same. Same length, slide it up. All right, let's go back to the hook shank, please, ma'am. So now we've got our, our dubbing on there. So remember I said keeping it thin. So I'm just going to work this up to right behind the wing, pull everything back. Bring my, my dubbing right up to behind the hook eye and work it back. So now I'm going to do a, a cross. Another one, and that should be about it. So this dubbing is extra, and now we're good. Pull that off of there. So keeping that that body slim, and that um, <clears throat> I probably could have gone one more wrap back on the the uh, the thorax, but to make it just a touch wider. But you can see it's just a slight increase in thickness. It's a pretty heavy dubbing though. Um, the the K-POC is not heavy, heavy, heavy at all. It's very light. It's about, I forget how, how, how much smaller it is than Superfine, but um, it's um, it was actually used in life jackets, I believe in World War One or Two before my time. Um, so it's a great dry fly material. So the, the last trick I'm going to do is cutting these wings and you'll see a lot of people that will, that will grab it and pull it back. I take the, uh, my scissors and I'm going to take it and put it right there. See, I just push my tails down. So bring my scissors down, bring this back, cut. And that. Is there, and sometimes I'll trim it just a touch shorter, but that is how I'll do my my wings so they're the right length, and they're they're the same every time. Makes sense. Size depends on. Yep, is that the material? I stand corrected. Yep, life jackets. And hey, Nan, Katie told me the other day that you made a when we were on the fifty cent and. Um, whatever it's called, the biggie smalls and everything. We're talking about that, that you made a, a joke and said Carla or someone. I didn't, sorry, I didn't pick up on it last time. So we'll do the same thing. We're going to do this one. Then well, we're going to do the smaller one, size 18. We'll do this a light olive version. Then. And we're going to do the tails a little bit different or a lot different because it's going to be a 10,000 times easier for me to show. So we're going to switch the thread to pale olive. Yeah, and and John, you're you're the man on on production tying. But when you are the the one tip that I'll share if you're tying that many flies, is any step you can do in a batch or in bulk. Like if you're tying twenty four dozen of these things, yeah, you need to like prepare all your wings and prepare this and get everything all together as best you can beforehand. Um, and that'll definitely save quite a bit of time, make it much easier. All right. So I've got two micro fabets here. And like I said, use whatever you want on this. It doesn't have to be this material. It can be actual rooster material or whatever. 
These aren't lined up, but that's okay. So same thing, we're going for the length of the hook, the whole hook. So grab here, pinch. Uh oh. And where'd it go? I threw it away. Once you know, got eleven left over from last time when I was doing this last night. Split the materials. Just try to get just enough so I can get in there and let's see. So now I bent the heck out of that one, but you can see that it's split. I'm gonna grab my thread, bring it like this. So see, I've got my thread sitting there. I don't know if you want to see from the side. I'll do this again. One different one. Um, I'll cheat. There we go. Bring it up. Oh, don't let go of the thread, though. Yeah. For a simple fly, I'm making this thing seem really difficult. All right. So all we did is we used the thread to split it, pretend like that one tail is not um, crooked, not bent. We've got our everything locked in there. The reason I couldn't find it is because usually I'll just save my tag in that break off and we're fine. So pull this up and you can adjust the, uh, the angle, how wide or, or, um, or well, Gary, that's good. Um, cause that's what we're bringing. Is there any other colors that we should bring other than pale olive PMD and rusty spinner. So on the, and, and let me, I'm going to do this twice. So this is why I, trim the um the buyout so i've got a buyout wrapped in here we'll just bring it up that's fine if i if let's pretend like i put glue on there and if i wrap this i'm trying to do this quick but it's not so i'm wrapping this up wrapping this up wrapping this up to here I'll see how my that, that leading the leading edge here, this kind of more translucent part, how it's over the hook eye. When I go to tie down my my area right there is gonna be really crowded. I'm I'm already crowding the hook eye, and that's where I need to cut off. So that's why I um that's why I trim that little bit of membrane off the, the turkey bile. Get that looking a little more decent. So I'm taking my, and this is the the uh, pale olive, almost looks like chartreuse, but the pale olive um, turkey biot. Taking my longer scissors. You don't have to trim much off, but just enough. That tied in like so. And now we'll switch it around. Green Drake Stone. What size? Uh, well, I don't think you tied Stonefly Spinner. I don't think. Could be wrong, though. That'd be a new pattern for me. Undo that. So this is size 18. So remember, this is somewhat on the smaller side. Make sure that's nice and tied down. I'll do the same thing. We'll get our get our Z line out. Get one wrap in, hold it up and down, get it right where I want it. Let's 
So now we got a little bow tie. Lock it in with two more X wraps. Put one behind, one in front. Now we're ready for some diving where you set same light olive kapok. Might be perfect for the big bugs. Don't forget caddis. Yep. Yeah, I think tan iris caddis is in size 16, size 20 and 22, beta sparkle duns. Uh, believe it or not, and we might do a show on this because I've never, we've never done this as a show, but um, standard old pheasant tail. Some waited, some not. But also remember, Craig is like the the man up there, and like he's, he's like he's been doing it for a few years, so just a couple. And um, like we're gonna be playing fish and stuff that he's been catching fish over there, and for the past thirty years, forty years. He was a sheriff of Yellowstone County in the 80s, I believe. All right, so same thing. You have that, that start right here. See my diving is quite a bit thinner on this size 18. Just get my X rapid diving in there. And we'll look at it, see how we're, we're doing so far. And I could use actually one more wrap behind the same mistake I made on the last one. I will finish it off. So that looks a little bit sharp proportion wise. That looks a little bit better, a little bit wider. Never Craig said to use one every time on. Yeah. He's going to fish trichos out there. I'm, uh, he did not mention trichos, so I don't know if they're just not around in June or if it's not going to be on the waters we're going to be fishing. But um, three dollar dips, yep, he did not mention those, but I would say that those pretty much work year round everywhere. Fish those here, we tied those a long time ago. All right, so let's try to do one that's a little bit neater. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to grab this, make sure my tails don't come up. Pull back. See, my tail is crookeder than, than heck, but it's not going to go together. That's a little bit better. But see how that, that wing is? It's not too thick. I mean, remember when... When you're thinking about the wing and the thickness of it, this is probably, I don't know, half to maybe a third, uh, I'd say half the thickness of the standard uh, Zelon uh, rope. But when you think about the wing, this is going to add flotation and silhouette. So as the trout's looking at it, and remember, it is a wing. It's a bug wing. It does not, you don't, it doesn't need much to keep this hook floating. And as far as the silhouette, it doesn't need to be like a piece of foam sitting on like two big chunks of foam sitting on the side. Just a real light, wispy wing. And um, cro crocoder, crocoder, I don't know about a crocoder, the word for 2023, possibly. But as you can see, we've been tying a few of these and that'll get added to the mix. And it, It'll fish just fine. I don't know if you can see it or not. Oh, there we go. So this is our beginning of our of that box, just in the surface film. Yeah, I mean that's that's all you want. And and for for me, when I'm fishing, um, let's see, do we need eighteen or yeah? Let's do another. Uh, we'll do it's another sixteen. When I'm fishing uh, these smaller dries like this. I'm not super worried about them. I, what what I'm looking for is a is um I will do a PMD. What I'm looking for is is that bubble, that rise, the the change in the water as I'm fishing. So if I can't see my fly, I know roughly where it's supposed to be. 
And that's that, that's what I'm looking for is for something to come up. And whether it's in the film, on top of the film, the duck is hard for me to see. Yeah, it's getting. I'm, I'm, I can see a duck. It's it's kind of pushing it though. But um, anyway. Well, that one is just crooked out of the box. I'll just pull it out. All right, so I'll try to do a better job, although I, th I already threw away my tag in. So we'll measure this to the hook length. And materials, if you don't have the right turkey buy-on, don't worry about it. Um, use Just use dubbing. So I find my there it is. Uh, we'll just use light olive. All right. So I got my tag in here. Let's can you switch over the side, mm -hmm. the side view? Uh, see, I've I've got a couple a couple years, like just a couple. So I'm gonna take my thread and typically, like I said, I use my tag in. But here's my tag in and thread, my fake one because I threw away my tag in. Grab it, put it in front of a bobbin like this, bring it up. So it's just going down the hook bend here. And then we're going to hold them together. Now you want to look down on it. And if you need to use your bodkins, you can separate them or whatever, it's fine. But just bring that up so you got the thread right in between the two tails. And let's switch over to the, the hook. Perfect. So we've got the thread in between the tails. I just bring it over here and don't pull too tight right now. Just get that first wrap in there. Okay. And now you can look at your tails and see, eh, do they need to be further split more or less? And you can pull them just ever so slightly. Just to adjust them just the way you want. And now you can wrap up to finish your body with a smooth underbody um now the one the things that that i would caution you on when you're doing this um national just picks up life you see it yep see you next week good night bill thanks for i didn't see you chat, chat on, chatting on here earlier um good thanks for hopping on so right here you can see this one little bump and this might be worth some about a millimeter um, this one little bump right here. So when I mash this down with my thread, that's going to, I don't know if you'll, you'll see it, that'll splay them out just a little bit more. See how they're moving just a little bit? That one little little bit right there will splay them just a touch more. Not really enough to worry about, but um, make sure they're set kind of the way we want them. That last wrap in there tight. And there we go. And then we're doing the PMD. All right, so we'll pull one off. I love these these magpie wild turkey biots are very cool. I don't want to get two of them. One is fine. I'll tell you what, some of this stuff just does not want to cooperate. All right, so I've got my my biot here, long scissors. Trim just a pinch of it off. And if you can see my, my cut's not super straight, but I'm just trying to get just a little bit off. Oh, it's really not straight now because I didn't get it all the way off. <laughs> but um, I'm just trying to get just a little bit of that, that leading edge off of there. So now we're going to wrap that in. Remember having a nice smooth underbody keeps it keeps it looking good. Did I forget to put dang super glue on that last one? Probably because I redid it. So if, if you're going to put extra super glue on or if you get an extra glob on like I did, try to get it on this side of the, the hook because you'll push it forward. Don't get it on the front of the hook because that will keep on pushing it forward. Oh, and Nan, are you still on here? Got some good 
good news for you. Here we go. So just wrap this up with even, even wraps. If you don't have a rotary vise, you can do this manually. Not a problem at all. Okay, Nan, they're uh, color grading John. Yep. Uh, today, there is now distribution for CNF design fly tying tools and their box and stuff in the United States. Found that out today. Pretty pumped about it. I figured you would be too. So we can get our CNF stuff again. All right, so same thing we've done before. Sorry, this is kind of like, this is an easy pattern. Just a little X here. Pull up on it, make sure it's all right where you want it. One more, lock everything in. One in front, one behind. And now just for the heck of it, I'm going to use the this uh, Zelon dubbing in PMD. A little bit of the side. There we go. Yeah. So the pale morning done, Zelon dubbing. I figure since it can, it smells like Yellowstone, like Kevin Coster, you know, I figured it'd be Angler Sport Group. That's right. Yep. Well, now Gary has somewhere he can get uh, his uh, CNF stuff from because we've been not been able to get it for so long, and they announced North American distribution today. But that's just me. Not. I mean, I think that's correct. You could absolutely. I think Charlie Craven's got got a um, a uh, one similar to this that right here he. Got to this point, uh, or he tied the hackle in first, I believe. But um, yes, he runs hackle through this part. You can definitely do this with, with a little bit of hackle if you want to. Get that one little bugger out of the way. All right. That one is just going to come off of there. Fixed it. Pull us back. Just check, see how it looks. That looks much better than that first one we did. Oh, and I switched to Primrose 12 on. Getting a few flies in the package is always, that is absolutely right. I wrap the bio, wrap the bio over in wet resin, hit it with light. See, I don't like using, and I, I'm sure that works, John. I, I do not, I'm not doubting you. I just don't like using resin as a glue like that because I don't feel like it, it absorbs quite as well. It'd be, it'd be almost like using, like I think that, that would work okay, like as a, as a substitution for what I'm doing right now. Because I've used resin this way, because you got it all here, and it's an easy way to, to do your whip finish. But as far as having it adhere to um, the biot, I just don't. But uh, man, I bet it, it I, probably works. Man, you're 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 the one, you're the one making the bucks over there selling your flies, not me. I'm just. For me, like this is about as production tying as I get. See, that one looks pretty good. That's what I'm gonna look for. Except for that, I'm gonna name that fiber Gary right there. There we go. Oh, out of there. Um, I mean, this is what do I have here? Like three, six, nine, twelve. So it's like fourteen. I'm gonna probably finish out the dozen, and uh, then I will be be done. A couple dozens good. I was get CNF on my account. Of. Cool. Cool, cool. All right, we'll do one more, then we'll be done, I think. You know, do one more size uh, 18. A little bit smaller. 
But uh, yeah. So we, Katie and I went fishing this weekend. I know you're a big shocker there. And Katie called Gary when we were done and bragged because she smoked me. She was pretty pumped. I don't know if I did that. I don't think that was me. It was not you. That doesn't sound like something I would do. No. Not at all. All right. These are coming to get a little bit a little bit easier now. Like I said the size of the hook shank. Or the size, the length of the hook shank. Split them. Since this is the last one, does anyone have any questions? Oh, you'll see this a little bit, a little bit better, which is the two tails. So I'm taking my my thread. I'm gonna go up in between like this, do a wrap, and then loosely bring that down around. So I've just done a figure eight right there. Does that make sense? I'm kind of arrange it, make sure it's just the way you want it. And that's that's just the way that I. I prefer to do it and i think it looks better when you have multiple tails but the other way is actually easier katie is getting ready for yep she is she's getting she's we're gonna have to hold on and hold on for the ride yep so remember trim that little bit off So as the wings are splayed out, get profile in the water. That's correct. So guys, use your use uh, post these up. Use hashtag wet finish Wednesday. We would as always love to see them. I'm not saying that we won't miss one of them here or there, but um, we uh, try to share them next week. See it, Truman. We'll be getting off of here after this bug too. This will be a nice little ending ending one. I'm just reminded about that CNF because I'm using my CNF hack pliers now. CNF is a wonderful, um, I'd say, present. So here's our size eighteen. Buy out wrapped with glue. I feel like I'm such a I feel like I'm not cheating, but um, I feel like I'm breaking the rules. All right, I'm gonna do it kind of like John, just cut off what I need. One, two, pull it up, maybe. So now we've got our wings in there a little better. Actually, I think I do like the um, having that bigger, longer piece. I'll try to just do it a little bit shorter. It's, not behaving for me. So we'll use the same, the Rust um, Zelon dubbing. I believe this is Rabbit and uh, Zelon mixed in. Doesn't dub quite as fine, quite as thin, but it's definitely forgiving. So I'm just kind of keeping those up so they're out of my way. Pull them back. I'll split them back apart. One, two, here we go. Tails might, or wings might be a touch long on it. See, uh, Freddy, wasn't this guys, Joe, you're not harassing at all. Um, we really looking forward to seeing your flies next week, Katie, while I'm finishing this up. Now we'll just eliminate the. The um, 
Sally Hampton's on this one. Get this cut off. Is there anything you would like to? Am I forgetting anything? Um, at least I just want to thank everybody for watching and um, congratulations to John Gray for winning the drawing for um, the J Stalker gift certificate. And I hope that everybody catches fish on a spinner or a Frenchie or whatever you want to catch it on a royal wolf, a an egg, a um, what do you call those? The squirmy wormy. <laughs> um, Anything that you like. That is correct, Amundo. And we'll best, best of luck to you on your fishing adventures, everyone. Absolutely. That's a fancy watch. It's a barometer. And it does, just, Steve. I don't know how to use them, though. Thanks, Joe. Gary. So, guys, we'll see you next week. We'll probably pull up another bug, maybe from Mr. Barnes himself, uh, to tie up for our trip out west. Most of these are going to work just fine out east, so they, they translate just fine. Um, love to see your all spinner or throw hack a lunch out, throw your variation of the spinner up. Um, we look forward to seeing everything. Y'all catch fish for us this weekend and have a great time. Thanks for stopping by. See you, see you guys. Hey, John. Have a great night. Bye, guys. See you later. Bye.